So to kick off, thanks for speaking to us as part of our series of interviews with uh, candidates for the Labour leadership. You're very welcome. Uh, to start with, when it comes to energy and climate change, what have you personally achieved that, that you're proud of? I've been involved in opposing the very large road building programmes in Britain in favour of uh, rail and more efficient forms of transport. And in Parliament specifically, I've supported measures to um, improve energy efficiency, particularly improve uh, house uh, insulation, and uh, look at the problems of energy poverty that uh, many families in Britain face. You've talked about um, potentially creating a sort of national utility. Would you be able to tell, tell me any yeah. more about that? We have uh, the post-war model of energy supplies in Britain were to bring into public ownership, national public ownership, all the electricity uh, generation and all the gas generation that happened. It, these were then privatised in the 1980s under Margaret Thatcher's government and um, since then we've had a uh, rather strange kind of energy market. I think you have to set yourselves a number of objectives. One is very, very high standards of insulation in all properties. Secondly is um, very high exacting energy standards on all things that use electricity be they cars, electrical appliances, or anything else. Thirdly, is um, looking at the question of how you generate that electricity. I'm in favour of the highest possible use of uh, PVs to generate electricity, but I find it rather sad when I see farmland being taken over to be given into um, solar energy generation, thus using crop space or grazing space while nearby there's acres and acres of roofs on warehouses and other things which are not being used for generation. And so every new building should essentially be um, covered in PV cells. So it's a question of funding that through a national investment strategy through the Green Energy Bank. Are you also nationalising the, the national grid or yes. the British gas? I would want the public ownership of the gas and the national grid, absolutely. On the question of energy supply, um, if we were down the model of saying all our energy is going to be produced by, for argument's sake, 20 coal-fired power, coal power stations, 20 nuclears, 10 big hydro stations, these are just mm. random figures, then it would be fairly straightforward to bring that into public ownership. If you're generating electricity from 100,000 homes, uh, or PVs on the roof, or from relatively which small is forms, which is what I want, yeah. then it's simply not credible or possible to make that into a mass public corporation. We also want to encourage municipal and cooperative um, developments of energy. Essentially, the more locally you generate electricity, the more efficient it is. Okay, so. So you have a decentralised model, a national grid. How about the, the big six, the suppliers? Would people still be buying there? Well, the big six are very, very powerful at the moment, far too powerful. They dominate an awful lot of what goes on. And uh, I would personally wish that the big six were under public ownership or public control in some form. But I don't want to take into public ownership every last local, uh, local facility because yeah. it's just not efficient yeah. and it wouldn't be a very good way of running things. There's a priority issue here though, isn't there? Because the national grid, and to, to bring that into national control, for example, that would be quite expensive. Um, and there's a question of whether that money is being used for, for feed-in tariffs. It seems to me that having the fundamentals of the national grid and future energy supplies and security <coughs> Excuse me, of energy supplies in public ownership is a good thing. Um, does it cost? Yes. Is there a return? Yes, because quite clearly any profits made then go to the public rather than to shareholders um, elsewhere. And we can also have a much better planning for the future. I wanted to move on to bills and then um, various think tanks have estimated that this is a fairly regressive way of raising money, that most of it goes to, it hits the poor harder than it hits the rich. Well, I get this um, argument put to me quite often by a lot of the very big companies um, that it hits the poorest hardest. Well, it doesn't have to. 
It depends how the pricing mechanism works. It does not have to. In any event, one can cap energy prices um, to ensure that doesn't happen. But there is a price that we all pay. If we generate by um, means that are not good for the environment and good for air quality, we all suffer. If we generate by nuclear, we all have a problem of nuclear waste. And the nationalisation, that would come from taxation rather than bills? Well, if you nationalise something, you bring it into public ownership, you can either do it by majority shareholding, you can do it by increased share sales which are then bought by the, by the public, by the government in order to give a controlling interest in it. There's a number of ways you can do it. I'm not looking at throwing money away, but I am looking at the question of public control and how it's achieved. That is the important thing. Okay. I think on the, the bills issue, what you're saying is that, that you would leave clean energy funded through bills. You wouldn't move it to taxation, as some suggested, because it would be more, more progressive. Well, I think you, you try and fund it through the bills if you can, but obviously you don't want to pay, make people's uh, energy supplies unaffordable because obviously then it's counterproductive. You're actually making people colder and more vulnerable in their own homes. I wanted to ask about oil and gas extraction actually in this country. Would you, in the longer term, oppose offshore drilling in the North Sea, for example, or coal mines in Wales, or how far would you go in that respect? There is not much coal mining left in Britain, and it, the industry was closed down um, by it's political... It's mostly open cast. What's left is, yeah. you're correct, what's left is open cast. The last uh, deep mine coal, uh, coal mines in South Wales have gone, but it's quite possible that in future years, coal prices will start to go up again around the world and maybe there'll be a case for what is actually very high quality coal, particularly in South Wales, being mined again. But if there's to be substantial coal-fired generation, it's got to be clean burn technology, it's got to have um, sulfur, sulfur filters on it, and it's got to be carbon neutral in what it does. So with carbon capture and storage, it's absolutely, you've supported absolutely. Yes, I do. I do yeah. support that carbon capture. So your your sort of mix is renewables and some coal with, with carbon capture. Yeah. If that can be, are you sure that can be delivered, or is that? I, I've looked at it. I've discussed it. I've heard about it. It's complicated. At one level, it looks very expensive, but the advantages also look. Um, quite attractive, but the principle has to be that we're protective of our environment, guaranteeing affordable energy supplies for everybody, and we're not ripped off by big companies. And uh, thank you very much. So just one final question, it's a yes or no on free issues, but you have answered most of them. Uh, so it's kind of a yes, no, or, or you don't yet know. Um, the large scale deployment of onshore wind and, and, wind and solar? Yes. Fracking in the UK? No. New nuclear power stations? No. Thank you very much, Daniel Gormick.